Hi, welcome to PSD Tuts. Now we've seen how we can create 3D objects directly in Photoshop, but we've mainly been looking at building objects in isolation. In this tutorial, we'll look at how to make an object that fits within an existing scene. To keep it simple, let's just start with a new text layer. When we click with the text tool, a new layer is created automatically. And let's type the word Airport. We can put this into bold, and let's make it rather bigger. And there is our word. We can easily turn this into a 3D object by clicking on 3D Extrusion in the 3D panel, and then the Create button. And there it is. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Now, the problem with this is, it doesn't seem to fit within this scene. And that's because our ground plane doesn't match the ground plane in the object. We can fix that. Let's move our object out of the way and define a new ground plane. And we can do that most simply by using the vanishing point filter. Now, I chose this photograph for a reason. And that's because it has a tiled floor which makes it very easy for us to set our perspective plane. We can hold the X key to zoom in, and I'm going to start by clicking the corner of this pair of tiles here. Now I'm going to follow along this back line until I get to this tile, and then I'm going to go along the line between the tiles until I get to, let's say, this point here. Now I'll zoom out, and I can see I want to come down the line of the tiles here until my bottom line is horizontal. And once again, let's zoom in so I can click that point. And there is our perspective grid. And if we want to, we can stretch it out just to make sure that it fits our scene. And it does fit rather nicely. Let's click OK. Well, so far there's no difference. The difference comes when we go onto the Current View tab in the 3D panel and then choose as our view that vanishing point grid. And here is our grid now coming into view. If we view the ground plane, you can see it doesn't look as if it matches our ground because the lines on the ground plane grid don't go in the same direction as the way that the tiles work in the photograph. But that doesn't really matter. Let's hide this again. When we pick up our object and drag it down, we can see actually it fits rather nicely into this space. To make sure we get it in the right place, we can go to the 3D menu and say Snap Object to Ground Plane, and now it'll sit firmly on there. So now we can rotate it around, we can slide it backwards and forwards, and you can see how it really does fit within this scene. Let's make it somewhat bigger, and because we've done that, once again we'll just snap it to that ground plane to make sure it's in the right position vertically. Let's now try and make it match the basic colour in this scene. At the moment it's this bright blue and that doesn't look any good at all. So let's go onto the Properties panel, click on the Text Swatch, and rather than picking a colour out of the sliders, we can actually click in the image itself. And if we pick part of this brown of the floor, we click OK to that, and we can see that now fits rather better. It's certainly matching the colours in this scene quite well. And to make the text a little bit more interesting, let's go onto this Properties panel, select the text again, and let's add a bevel to it. We'll add just a simple bevel, just to give it a little bit of interest.
So, what was the point of making this ground plane? Well, the point is, we can now work with this ground plane to catch shadows and to catch reflections. So let's have a look at the lighting. When we look at the people in the scene, you can see they appear to be lit from the top right, and this side of them appears to be in shadow. If we look at this man in the background, he's clearly lit from the right-hand side. So let's change the lighting. We can click on this little lighting button, and now we can drag this around to match that angle. And I think something like there is going to be about right. It looks as if our text is hovering very slightly, and the reason for that is it is very slightly above the ground plane. And that's because the letter O, as letter O's do, projects slightly below the level of the rest of the lettering. But let's assume that our lettering is standing on a few little corks just to raise it off the ground slightly. We can live with that. Let's have a look at how our shadows work. We've said we want this to cast shadows. We can soften those shadows, and we can soften them by going back to our lighting tab and setting the softness in here. And as we drag it, you can see there's a starting to be a slight dot effect on these shadows, and that's because it's rendering this in real time, and that's the result that we get until we do a render. If we make a rectangular selection, we can do a quick test render on this area, and we can see as we go through, those shadows are looking quite nice and soft, and they're certainly far more pleasing than they were when they're completely hard. But let's take this a step further. Let's put a reflection in that ground plane. We can do that by going to the Environment tab, and if we scroll down in the Properties panel now, we can turn on Reflections. We'll set the Opacity quite high. Let's set this to about 50%. And that will give us a perfectly glassy reflection. We want this reflection to fade off. If you look at the reflections of the people in the background, they clearly go a little way down, but they don't go all the way to match the person precisely. And we do that by increasing the roughness. And let's bring this roughness up to around 30%. Now, although Photoshop can show quite a lot in real time, remember what we're looking at now is just a preview. And one of the things it's unable to show us is how this roughness value will affect the fade-off in our reflection. To get a preview of the final result, let's make a rectangular selection and try doing a render of just this selection. Rendering a selection is always much, much faster than rendering the whole image, and it's a very useful way to get a quick idea of how your image is going to shape up. And we can see this is working out quite well. We're getting quite a strong reflection just by the bottom of the letters, and then it's fading off. Perhaps it's fading off a little bit too sharply. It might be useful if that went a little bit further down before it faded away. So let's click to stop that render and take this roughness down. Let's try it at 20%. And we'll do another render. OK, this time we can see that it's rendering that reflection further before it starts to fade away. And that's looking pretty good. As we do any kind of render, it goes through in multiple passes, and each pass will refine the effect a little bit more. At any point, we can stop it just by clicking it, so we can see the effect. And that's enough to show us that this is pretty much the effect that we want. So let's deselect just by clicking away from it. Well, looking at this, this side is really in shadow, but it's in too much shadow. Although we've got the light coming from the direction we want it to, it's an airport, there are lights all over the place. What we wouldn't have is this very deep shadow on one side of the object. So let's go to the lighting section of the 3D panel and add a new infinite light. When we switch to the Move tool, there's the light. We can move it over to this side. And because that's really too bright, 
we can bring the intensity of this secondary light down. All we wanted to do is to fill in some of these shadows. Taking it down to about there is going to give us pretty much what we want. And let's move this round to the front and make that a little bit higher. And we'll certainly want to make the shadow of this light very much softer. As we drag, you can see the preview effect showing how the softness is going to work. Again, we can only see how it'll really look by making a test render. So once again, let's switch to the Move tool. Let's select a typical part of this image and try rendering it. And now we can see the light from the side is adding light where we want it, and we're getting quite a good soft shadow cast from the lettering on itself. And that looks pretty good. Click to stop that render. We can click anywhere to deselect, and let's now do a full render of the whole scene. And here we are going through the scene. Now in CS5, Photoshop would take a lot of time to render the top part of an image like this one. But as you can see, the top part is simply the background photograph. There's very little rendering to be done there. Nonetheless, Photoshop will go through it. It will go through it fairly rapidly, and it's not until we get to a position like this, where the bottom of these squares is starting to include our 3D object, that it then slows down and does it more carefully. Now again, it's doing several passes over this object. And at any point, we can pause it either to say, well, that's enough to give us a, an idea of the test render, or we could just stop it and say, you know, that's good enough. I realize it could get better and better through several more renders, but frankly, that's as much as I need for my purposes here. And I think that's what we'll do when it gets to the bottom of this scene. There's still a very, very slight roughness. You can just make out some dots in the background here. But that's going to give us as much as we need for our purposes. So when it gets to the end, I'll simply click the button, the render will stop, and there's our finished scene. And you can see that by defining a ground plane to match the vanishing point perspective of this scene, what we're able to do is to make an object that fits precisely within this scene. You can see we've got the reflection of this object that fades away very neatly into the ground. We've got multiple lights matching the feel of the lighting in the scene, and we've colored the object to match the color of the scene. It wasn't hard to create, but what we have got is a very convincing object that fits very neatly within this airport environment.